Huff is the Flying 30. Um, Upper Fox, famed for the Flying 15 design, um, had a, a strange dream, I think, in the bath one day about making a family of flying boats. So they're 15, the 18, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 and 50. I think he drew plans for all of those. And we know that there were several 18s and 20s built. Um, there was only one 30. This boat was, I guess, spotted by our trust, the trustees who are fanatic for Upper Fox. So I went to see the boat in, in Cowes, where she was uh, on the hard, and we had a look round. And they bought the boat in the assumption that we could make, uh, make use of it. I was just given the email, you know, will that do? Can you do something with her? We made use of it quite straight away. We took her to Scotland with, um, for a cruise around the uh, Inner Hebrides. When we came down here, we then set up a, a school and she became um, a training boat for people following the RWA syllabus, really as well as doing some work with Princess Trust and, um, and she was very good. She is a fantastic boat to sail, there's no question, she's so nice to sail. Um, but she was getting tired, getting very tired. Well, Douglas's friendship with Uffa goes back to the 1920s when um, he decided to ask Uffa to design an International 14 for him. And um, in fact, he was to design four international 14s over the f following years. They all had the, the prefix Huff. The first boat was called Huff, and that was because Douglas explained three quarters of it was Uffa and one quarter Heard, which gave him the Huff. Over those years, they became firmer friends. The, in the early days, there were letters from Uffa addressed to Mr. Hurd, but as time went on, they became much more friendly. And Uffa actually nicknamed Douglas Huff in the end, and the letters began Dear Huff. So that shows how their relationship developed. They enjoyed each other's company. After the war, Uffa was obviously moving in the direction of designing a keelboat based on the, the concept of the, the planing hull of his, his dinghies and he designed the Flying 15 and that was in uh, 1947 I think and in 1950 he and Douglas must have discussed the idea of taking it on another step and designing a Flying 30. It was to be built by Douglas's great friend Jack Tyrrell down in Arklow. She drew a lot of attention when she was launched and uh, they had a commission straight after to build a 35. So there was definitely a 30 and a 35 racing um, in Dun uh, Dunleary or D Dublin, Dublin Bay. In 1951, uh, after she was launched, they had planned to uh, go to the south of England to compete in the fastness race. It was um, just one of those unlucky years. The weather was very bad and the race was actually postponed for quite a number of hours. And when they did um, begin the race, the weather was still very bad 
and within the first day 12 of the competing boats had to retire with damage including unfortunately Huff. He missed out on competing in the fastnet which had been the, one of his big objectives but he and his crew learnt a lot about the boat in that first season. She was originally designed just with a well instead of uh, an inboard engine, a well that took an outboard and that was found to be inadequate and didn't really work very well. So the following winter he fitted a, a smallish inboard engine. She was quite difficult to steer off the wind. Because of her sort of surfing hull, she did have the tendency occasionally to, to want to broach and this was very difficult to uh, to come to terms with because she had a wheel, a steering wheel. Douglas changed the wheel and put in a tiller instead, which gave uh, much greater control of the boat when she was off the wind. We refastened her, so 8,000 copper nails. We've splined between each plank with cedar to we, we cut the, the seams open to allow the planks to move when we fasten them on. We put new floors in, we put new timber before we put the new floors in, um, and then we've just started to make good the rest of the boat. The cockpit we've changed from the, a wheel steering to tiller steering. We've moved the main sheet track back here. So we have done some alterations here, new winch mountings on the side here, uh, those winch mountings, uh, the sheet winches are as they were. And then inside, we're trying to put a back as far as we can um, to an original sort of look. We've gutted the inside and we're, we're repairing the bulkheads, making the shape in the bulkheads that she used to have. Um, the differences from the original will be that she, for commercial, commercial reasons we have to have an engine, so we're putting the engine back in but we're going to a hydraulic drive so the engine will be in the saloon which should make the trim better and we're trying to get six bunks because five to one ratio instructor to students makes sense as far as charter is concerned and that's how we ran her before which seems to work um, and that's it so we're actually at that stage we're just trying to get it all together she's the link between the you know the old long keelers and a, and a modern racing yacht. She was the boat that could cruise very fast. She can, she can sail quickly. And it's how she's put together as well, you know, it's that, it's that structure. They've got a three ton ballast keel, you know, concentrated weight, and it's on a lightweight wooden structure. This boat, when she, at the moment she weighs, uh, well, when we moved her from over there, as far as we could tell, it's, um, it's six and a half tons, you know, so she's going to be more than that. You can make, maybe say she'll seven and a half, perhaps, when, she's, when, when we've put her in. And that is so much lighter than an equivalent size modern fiberglass boat. You know, something, a cruising boat that's a modern, newly built, would weigh maybe 10 or, 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 or 11 tons. So she's significantly light. Douglas was really interested in development as well as uh, sailing races and this is why he enjoyed developing the 14s with with offer but there was a tendency to move more into one design as the years got, went by um, and um, I think even offer was was moving in that direction as well so half of Arkler was uh, a look back to the development idea and uh, I think Douglas was very keen to see Offa's uh, ability to design surfing or planing hulls so well in dinghies translated into a keelboat. So he was as involved in the experiment as, as Offa was in many ways. The strength is in the design of, uh, uh, of how they put it together, having the double diagonal giving her that triangulation, having double stringers, 
and taking all the forces up to the stringer. So the force from the from the rudder, the forces from the keel when she's heeled, are taken up to the stringers, and that's it's massively strong just from the from the design of the structure, and that's up a completely that's his genius really just to be able to do that they couldn't hang that kind of weight on a plastic boat for for about 10 years after that I, think. I did find some correspondence which initially Uffa would address Douglas as Mr Hurd but it gradually became uh, much more friendly as the years went by and they did seem to become really firm friends as um, they uh, gradually progressed through the four international 14s and by the time they moved on to designing Huff of Arklo they were really firm friends. Vincent Delaney, my first husband, was a regular crew on Huff of Arklo right from the start and so um, we were very involved with Douglas uh, over those years and then um, subsequently Douglas started doing offshore cruising a lot in Huff of Arklo, and he eventually decided to go on a cruise to the Azores. He very kindly invited me uh, to go as, as one of the crew. So I had the privilege of doing a long offshore cruise on Huff of Arklo to the Azores, which involved a 10-day cruise there. Uh, 10 days out of the islands and 10 days back. And she was a wonderfully comfortable cruising boat um, to make a trip like that. Not very long after that, Douglas sold half of Arklo. Um, and um, a few years after that again, uh, Douglas's wife had died and Vincent, my husband, had died and uh, we were married. So um, Huff really still seemed to be in our lives to the extent that um, she was often talked about and Douglas had been presented with a very, very fine model of her which uh, resides in my sitting room today. We relaunched the boat a month ago, 7th of September, and we had a little celebration and invited the uh, people from HLF, and people from our trust, and, and all the volunteers that help locally. And a lot of folks came down that we hadn't expected, to be honest. They knew, people had followed us, I guess, um, through the project. Uh, we had John Kieran, who we know helped um, with the previous restoration, and, we, and he got in touch having seen us on the on the on the internet. Um, and he came down. He's a curator at the Liverpool Museum. Alistair, who is the son of one of Douglas Hurd's friends, and actually recognised his father when we showed him the film of the boat. On her maiden voyage, he recognised his father sailing with Douglas, which was brilliant. Um, Bill, who sailed a boat when, uh, 50 years ago, when she was new, and he, with his brother, um, and he's been a tremendous help in getting us in touch with Ruth Hurd, who's quite elderly now, but still very interested in and, under, and knows what we're doing, and has sent over several documents that she has um, and has promised us a look at her archive of photographs that she's got when we get the boat to Arklo next year which will be something to look forward to. I suppose the other thing to point out really is how much effort is required with a lottery project with all the participation of the public. You need to disseminate what you're doing and to do that you need a lot of volunteer help and we did have a lot of friends locally helped us with that and it was lovely to see them um, enjoy a party and we've taken them out sailing so this month we've been thanking everybody giving them all a sail on the boat and um, 
we look forward to her being absolutely ready for next season. There's quite a few things to do, I guess. I know we've really just put the boat together, put her in the water, um, just to try her out. And we feel that we've got the weight distribution a lot better than, she, than it was, so she's trimmed better. And that should give her a chance to sail better, have a better sailing performance. Um, it's quite a bit of work, I guess, on the making the rig, the running rig, work properly. Um, and finishing off the inside, it's got to be up to charter standard for next season, so there's a winter's work to do. Um, so, having got to four weeks from launching, we now look forward to putting her back in the shed for the winter, um, just to finish all those uh, bits off. And fingers crossed we'll be ready to go next um, next season.